Mr. Jesse. How are you doing, sir? Ah, oh, I'm doing well. No days off. Wearing my Texas T-shirt. <laughs> the man that walks like a like a jacko. <laughs> oh boy. Well, hopefully, five weeks from now, um, we'll, we'll slow down a bit. You know. So I've been up since. Good that. news for you. This is my third meeting this morning, and it's just 9 a.m. So, um, but and there's two more after this. But the good thing is, um, it's 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 work, right? Because it's long hours, and you have to do certain things. But at the same time, it's play because it's 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 what I enjoy, um, and it's it's really interesting. I owe you. That's I owe you like, <laughs> no, we need to, let's get back on, on the real plan, real. Um, so guys, for those of you that don't know, Jesse is, um, he's, he's becoming a, a financial fitness instructor as well because of how much he's learning and growing. Um, but he's also like a health fitness um, instructor. And um, mainly one of the things that he's done um, which I've seen great results before Techstars made me fall off the ladder, is that he basically gives you like pointers on this is how you need to structure your nutrition. And by eating what you're already eating, just changing the portions and, and also like changing one or two things about your day, you just like organically um, be burning like weight and, and just get, come to like a very natural um, weight loss regimen. So comes highly recommended. Um, and uh, we're, we're trying to jump into other things, but I, if you guys would ever get a chance, hit up Jesse. He's in our Telegram group. Um, he's in our Telegram group. He's, he's someone that, you know, is part of the Rise family. And, and um, if you need to reach him, you can reach out to me, but you can also reach out to him on the group. If you need someone that will give you, like, nutritional advice. Not, he's not a nutritionist per se, but again, from what he has worked for him, he'll try to also understand you, what your lifestyle looks like, what your what would work for you, and make recommendations. So they've really worked. So yeah, Jesse, good to have you, man. Yeah, boss. Thank you, sir. I want to kind of like broadcast this early, so that a few people will come in because we we have we have more than a, we have like almost a thousand people register for this call. But usually what happens is that 20 to 30% actually make the call. Um, so we'll see how many people are actually join in. But I want to get to meet the rest of us. Um, so I know Ogechuku Okolie. I know you by name. Um, I, that, that's the only person that I can recognize their name from here. So um, Fumilayo Ugo Chinweike, um, can you guys just introduce yourselves a little bit before I then go live? I guess Chiwi you can go first. Chiwi are you there? You're muted. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's it going? Um, very good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Chiwi K. Um, in Nigeria, Lagos, precisely. Awesome. Um, I'm a front-end developer. Yeah, before the whole pandemic started and work gets a lot of issues connected with it. Though we are fixing it out. Makes sense. Uh, I, yeah, I've been on Riseverse, I think, uh, uh, since March, I think. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, so. Um, just so that we can... We can get a couple of other, and I'm going to ask you a bit more about each of you individually. Um, but okay, you can just take one minute and introduce yourself as well. Um, oh, others are joining. Um, so, but, okay, yeah, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ogechuku Okoli. I read economics education. Um, what they call the Corona Corps members because, uh. 
while we're in camp, this pandemic, so they usually call us <laughs> Corona poppers. <laughs> but currently, I'm sewing. Like, I do sew, so I make dresses for people. That's yeah. it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Pumilaya, just intro yourself, um, and then I'm going to give you guys a brief of what to expect before we get into life. Talk about our time. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Fumi, and um, I am a legal practitioner working with the state government. Are you the Fumi that I know? Yes. <laughs> oh, sweet deal, sweet deal, sweet deal. I didn't know it was you. Okay, ah. finish your intro. Okay, thank you. Currently in Kogi State, okay, not to be precise, and... um. I just I joined Rise early this year, yeah. and I currently just started my business side of something. Awesome. <laughs> That's all. All right. So, um, just just to give you guys a brief before before again I I turn on the broadcast. It's eight fifty nine here, so just one minute to our time. Um, try to try my best to keep things um to time. So an hour start exactly where I want to start. So the idea is that we want this to be in-house conversation, right? So yeah, we have people coming in and not all of them are really with us. But we also um, wanted the panelists to be people that are in the group because what we want to do is just say, hey, this thing that we've talked about, which is retiring with a million dollars, is it possible? Um, what do you need to do to achieve that? Um, and also, what are you currently doing? What's your current experience? Where do you fall within the bracket of, you know, your path towards this financial freedom? So most of us fall within the dreamers and the um, dreamers and the company climbers um, path. So, so um, dreamers, company climbers, as far as I want to do. But we're also, for, for, for most of this conversation about retiring with a million dollars, the goal is, or the, the focus is the savior investor path. Um, and so I'm going to be asking, we're going to also try to not dive too deep into like your personal lives. Because again, we, we, this is relatively a public forum. Um, so we can highlight different things about what you do that are relevant to the topic. Um, but even if I ask you questions that you feel um, might be too personal, um, feel free not to answer or feel free to you know, say, okay, I'm going to answer this part, but I won't answer this part. But overall, I want it to be just... Um, it's a conversation. Um, it's also like a little bit of a back and forth. I'm going to be asking questions and then we're going to be thinking together about how can we, as an entire cohort, um, put ourselves on track to achieving this goal. So you guys are going to have to make this show happen um, or succeed um, in partnership with me. And I appreciate you guys for coming on board because, again, this is what we do because ultimately we care about the outcomes, right? So I'm going to turn the broadcast on now, um, and then our call will start. All righty. So broadcast is live. Attendees are coming in 13. Let's see. We usually give like a couple minutes for people to come into the room um, before we kick the meeting off officially. So a couple of minutes. Um, so I guess that, that would be a good time for... For us to go through a bit more intro. Um, so I'm going to call your name and you can just tell me your full name and what you do. Um, and, and that will be it really. So um, Allah Ali, please unmute and just intro yourself. Talk about what you do when you join Drys and all of that. Just one minute. You're on. Can you hear us? Okay. Let's let's move to Ido. Ido Anyekan. I hope I say your name right. Um Ido. Okay. Um, yes, you did. Okay. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, we can hear So, you. my name is Ido Anyekan. Yes, you said it correctly. Awesome. I, 
I am a, I, I am a realtor. I'm also a lawyer, uh, mm-hmm. but I own a real estate company in Accra Ibom State. Uh, that's the um, city of Oyo in Accra Ibom State. Um, so that's what I do. And uh, that's who I am. Amazing. Nice to meet you, Ido. You're part of our, um, our Telegram group, yes? Uh, looks like we lost you, Ido. All right, Ugo. Oh, okay, yes. I'm part of the Telegram group. Okay, all right. Sweet and day. I joined Rise in May. Okay. In May Perfect. this year, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right. Ugo, can, can you just intro yourself, just what you do, um, you know, when you joined us, and, 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 and that's about it. Just your name, what you do, and when you joined us. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Ugo, and I'm a student, and I'm a cinematographer as well, and I joined Rise in, I think, April. Oh, okay. Sweet deal. So, cinematographer. So, yes. what you are, you, are you... Have you done projects or are you just learning? Because you mentioned you're a student. Yeah, I've done projects. I've been a cinematographer for about two years now. Uh, uh, so, Nollywood projects. Have you watched <laughs> No, you haven't. You probably haven't. Okay. I'm more into ads. Yeah, I'm more into ads. Okay. Oh, to ads. I see. All right. We'll, we'll definitely, because um, one of the things that I like to do um, is also know what, you know, people in, in our community, you know, what do you do? And, and so that we can, again, if there are places you can help us, and if there are also places where we can help you, um, that, would, that would be fun. And so, yeah, someone already shared, um, if you are an attendee and you want to share, um, you know, what you do, who you are, um, just drop it in the chat box. We want this so they... they this is this is five minutes into the into the call, so um, I guess it's time to I guess kick it off officially. So what we want to achieve with this call, so the the theme of today's meeting is how to retire with a million dollars. That's the goal. That's that's what the t- conversation is about. How to retire with a million dollars? We're almost at two hundred people in five minutes, so that's 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 interesting. Um, and the the point that the reason for this is one we have our community, our club, our, our group. And the reason we created this group is that we want to be surrounded by people who are pushing in the same direction, right? So you, that's the first goal, people who are pushing in the same financial direction. And then secondly, people who have different levels of experience in this journey. Um, maybe uh, some of us that are, you know, have a finance background, we have an understanding of the mechanics of the space, even if we're also still on that journey about growing. Um, we also have some people who maybe their backgrounds are coming from different categories, but because again, from their own experience, because of their learning, um, or and then some that are really well off. So we have people still a part of the group who are like, you know, financially successful, bona fide successful people, you know, don't necessarily want to drop any names but if you've been in our Telegram group, you might have seen a couple of people. That, um, some of them are more vocal than others. But the idea is just pull people together to learn from each other, one, to learn together as a cohort, two. And thirdly, um, I always put it third, um, to talk about Rise products and how those products help you achieve our goal, right? So um, the product doesn't come first, even though, yes, we are here because our company, we have financial products. Um, so we have an investment product, RiseVest, um, that is designed to allow people to do long-term investments in dollars and that their investments are managed globally across, um, across like different asset classes, um, really to world-class standard. And that way you can, you can put money away without having to do a lot of the work by yourself. But this community preceded that program. Right, the, the, the products rather. This community existed even before uh, we built a product. This community existed first because you know we figured that it's always a good idea to learn together, to put surround yourself with people pushing in the same direction, um, and also to understand from a very deep level what are some of the challenges um, that are in the way of us as a group, as a 
people around the country, everywhere. What are the challenges in the way of us achieving the financial success and the financial freedom that we want to achieve? And therefore, some of our products will go into addressing that. Some of our activities will go into addressing that. Some of our initiatives, um, partnerships, conversations like this all go into addressing that. Um, and so this is the eighth call we're having this year. Um, and the topic for this is how do I retire? How to retire with a million dollars? And so I have with me um, several um, other people who are members of Rice Community, who are members of our investment club, who are users of Rice product as well, um, who are here mainly to, you know, for us to think through this question together, right? How do we retire with a million dollars? And some of them um, would also just share their story about, you know, whatever they do currently, what path that they think they are going to take or that is available to them, excuse me, is available to them to achieve this goal. And then um, just qu other questions that they may have for us or that you as attendees will have um, that we can all address on this call. But the goal is that by the time we finish this call, anybody that attends here would look at themselves, look at where they are, and they'll, they'll see one, okay, it's possible to retire with a million dollars, but X, Y, Z, are the things I have to do currently, or X, Y, Z are the things I have to change about where I am currently. Two, they'll also see some other people who are also trying to achieve the same thing and see some of those things, some of the things that those people have done or are doing or things that they've learned so that they'll know that, okay, it's not something up there. We, we thought about, and for me, I really thought about having, there were a couple of people that I wanted to bring in as guests. Um, but I think that might be like a part two of this meeting because I wanted the first part to be us, you know, we're not bringing in any relatively already well-off person. Um, we're not bringing in any relatively, people that have kind of come closer to that goal. Um, we're not bringing them in yet because it can be intimidating. Let's, let's be honest, it can be intimidating. If someone comes out now, I know a few that would come out and tell us, the real bare bones story of how they achieved what they achieved. Most of us might walk away with the feeling that, ah, you know what? I, I don't think, I, I don't think I can do this. Right. That that's, that's honestly something that could happen. A lot of us might feel like, ah, no, I can't, I can't achieve this. So I, I said, okay, fine. Let's have a conversation first with all of us that are still, you know, starting this journey or thinking about it. And then kind of once we understand that it's possible and we understand some of the routes that we can use to achieve it, we can now bring in some people that will come and intimidate us properly with their story by the next month's meeting. So this meeting usually holds the last Saturday of every month. Um, and each month we try to do something different, but each, the goal is always to help us continue to advance on this journey towards financial success. So that's my five minutes of background laying. Um, so the people that I have on here, so we've met Chin Wei Ke, we've just, we've just met Ido. Um, Jesse is someone that I know personally at this point. Um, Melody Ogechuku is also a long time member I've interacted with a lot. Um, Olawale, Paul. Um, Paul, we didn't get a chance for, to, 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 to meet you formally. But that's fine. Um, then there's Fumi Lyo, who has been in, I think for me, one of my favorite um, interactions as part of our um, investment group, because I really love people that pick up something and then take action almost immediately. And I'm sure she'll talk about that. And then we met Ugo Opar DK, um, who I think was also introduced herself. Um, she's the student and cinematographer. And so like really interesting, um, set of people here and then my team members um to be is here to be you guys know from the um from the telegram group and from our communities um to be is the community manager for rise um he's been very instrumental in managing the the the, the, the community um and also putting this event together um and then if he is a uh, head of marketing she's also here on the call um and she's also there are some of the people that again you all listen to me talk here like 
for minutes and hours at a time. Um, but there's a lot of people in the team that really help make all of this possible. And so um, I wanted us to, to also like be aware of, of uh, and, and, and recognize that they are here as well. Um, so that's it as far as our introductions. So we're going to jump into the call proper, right? Um, and the way that this is gonna go is, I'll make some comments, I'll ask some questions, and then as an audience member, as a panelist, um, you know, either you can throw up a perspective um, or you can also ask a question and we can go back and forth. But we really want, especially for attendees, drop questions in the chat box. Uh, there's a Q&A and then there's just a normal chat box. Um, but if you are just joining, introduce yourself, your name, where you're from, what you do. Um, it will help us really kind of get a feel for who is in the room. Um, so without further ado, um, I want to start by asking, um, and I'm going to ask my panelists, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick out a couple like individually to just ask the question first. Do you think, or what do you think about this topic of how to retire with a million dollars? Is this something achievable? Is this something that, you know what, I've never thought about, and there's no right or wrong answer. We don't have to, this is not a political campaign. We don't have to like sound a certain way, right? But is, have, is this something you've thought about and said, oh yeah, this is something I'm definitely pushing towards? Is this something that you've just heard for the first time and you're like, oh, is this something I can even do from where I live in Nigeria? Or is this something that you've looked at and said, oh yeah, it's definitely achievable and I'm on track, or I'm, at least I'm hoping that I can, I can go ahead and achieve it. So I'm gonna ask, three different panelists for their perspective. Um, let me start with Ugo, since you were the last person that I was just speaking to. I'm gonna start from you. So starting with, do you think retiring with a million dollars from Nigeria is something realistic? Is it something you've, you've seen achievable and how? Or is it just something that is completely new to you? Um, so please, Ugo, please go ahead. Hmm. This is a heavy question. I mean, I think it is. I think it is. You know, I think it is. But a million dollars is a lot of money because I earn in Naira, but I think it is. <laughs> Makes sense. And, and so the, the other question I'm going to follow, follow that, and you make a good point, which is that almost all of us here, we earn in Naira, and yet we're trying to retire with a million dollars. Um, so the question now is you specifically, is this something that you would be like, you know what, this is some, and it doesn't matter when, but this is definitely something that I'm, I'm going to, that I want to achieve. I want to say yes, at least I have a million dollars before I retire. Is that something that you can say, just a yes or no? That was, that was actually a follow up for you. Is this a personal goal or something you think you want to achieve or just something you're like, nah, if it happens, it happens. I mean, it's something that I wouldn't mind. Okay. All right. Sounds, yes. Good. Yes. Sounds good. Sounds good. That, that's, a, that's a great answer. All right. So um, I'm going to ask the, the second person. Um, Jesse, kind of give me your thoughts on it. Is this an achievable goal? Is this just out of the realm of, of reality? I um, like to set here. it as a goal. You'd like you would like to set it as a goal. Uh, Ugo, I think we lost you a bit there. But Jesse, go ahead, go ahead and jump in. Um, what do you think right. of this? Be, before now, let's say like um, October last year. If you had asked me this question, my answer would have been, "You got to be kidding me." <laughs> but where I am ah, uh, your internet um, now, where I stand so I've right. been able to see on my spreadsheet mm -hmm. it is very very achievable, that's a mm -hmm. part of the question, the other part would be is if you ask me, do I want it you know, because everybody is different in what they want I mean, for me I don't think I need it Okay. I, I have a map that I have put together in my book and I can see 
how achievable it will be. And um, I'm already even showing people how people who want to achieve it, I'm showing them how to achieve it. So it's really, really very practical. Awesome. Um, I, I, I like and even that. practical for a Nigerian. I'm not talking about someone that ends in dollar. Or practical for someone that ends in Naira. Awesome. 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 So first of all, what I want you guys to do, if, if anybody here isn't um, share like a link to this call, um, just because you want more people. And usually after these meetings, we'll share the recording, right? But you want more people to be in this room because from what you can see that Jesse said, he has a spreadsheet that can show you that even for someone in Nigeria, this is achievable. And now this is where we are coming from too, as a community and as a, as a company. Um, even for our products, we thought about it and we realized that, um, you know what, let me not share my thoughts yet. Let me ask the last person because um, that way I don't, I don't see what, um, I don't preempt what someone else would want to also discuss. So who wants to go, who wants to be the third person? Um, someone can volunteer. One of the panelists um, can just volunteer and share their thoughts about, about this topic as well and whether or not it's achievable and whether or not you as a person want to achieve it. So who wants to go? Who wants to go next? Yeah, um, hi everyone, I'm Paul. Yeah, yeah. I'm Paul Ola Dimitri. Uh, I'm a product manager for a robotics education company. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely think it's possible and uh, achievable. I used to think also like Jesse that it wasn't before, but uh, I think one of the eye-openers for me was the book that was suggested in the group, which was uh, Financial Freedom by Grant Sabatier. And after actually doing that calculation, I saw that it is definitely it is definitely a path that almost anyone can follow. Uh, personally, I don't know if I do want $1 million because, of course, uh, getting that amount of money comes with like a ton of sacrifice. Uh, like it depends on the lifestyle that you want eventually. But uh, definitely, I want to retire with financial freedom. I don't know if $1 million is the particular number. Makes sense. All right. So I like, I like the fact that you highlighted a couple of things there. One is um, the book that we read, you calculated your retirement number and you saw that it's possible. <laughs> Someone said, look at this. <laughs> how these guys reject it. <laughs> look at how these guys reject it. One million dollars. <laughs> so we just shared um, a, a link to the Telegram group because so what, what, what Paul said that I like is one, um, he, he, did a, he did the math, you know, he did the calculation, he realized it's very achievable. Um, and that's something that he picked up from the book. So the book, that, that was uh, our two books ago, right? So we read, read, I just shared the name of the book, Financial Freedom by Grant Sabatier. We read it as a, as a group in our Telegram group two months ago, and then we read Atomic Habits. And now we're, read, we're reading um, is Automatic Millionaire. This is the first book that we're, I'm reading for the first time. Um, the, the book we're reading currently is the first book I'm reading for the first time with the rest of the club. Most of the books um, I've read before. And so I kind of like, except, well, Atomic Habits, um, but I read it kind of like faster than the, the rest of the group. But now I'm, I'm basically reading along with everyone. Else. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. So talk, share the more light to that. We, have, we select a book, we read it as a group, we extract lessons from it. And every Sunday we kind of like do summaries and talk about um, and talk about what we've picked out from the book and what that implies for our financial journey. And we've been doing this since January. So we've talked about the uh, fundamentals of investing. That that um, um, what's his name? The guy that manages Oak Tree um, Capital, uh, Howard Marks. She, like we read that book, and then we read Financial Freedom, and then we read Atomic Habits, um, and then we, you know we read a couple of other books. So we've shared a link to the Telegram group for those that want to join it. Um, I'm gonna drop that again. But Paul, Paul also makes another point, which is that he's not sure if he wants necessarily to have that, right? Because it comes with, um, it comes with its own 
you know, its own wahala, for lack of a better word. Um, so you have to know, you have to know that, um, so let me share, okay. To all, I'm gonna share the link to all panelists and attendees, sorry. Um, link to Telegram. My team, my team is gonna share, like when you guys ask for some of these things, so if it should be, just let's share like links to the Telegram group or answer questions like the name of the book and all those type of things um, so that we, we, we are giving the audience the tools to also jump into these this communities and, and also be part of these conversations. But the point Paul made is that, you know, having that much money um, comes with its own set of baggages, which is something that I'm going to address, right? Because the truth of the matter is we have this somewhat in the back of our heads that, you know what? Do I really want all that wahala, right? Um, but the truth is, there is a way of achieving this goal without taking on too, there's no, there's no, life is almost zero sum in the sense that there's no free lunch, um, but you're gonna deal with complications anyway, right? So if you're gonna deal with a complicated life anyway, there, there's no, there's no, there's no such thing as this. Once you're an adult, there's no such thing as a simple life. You're just gonna have to manage responsibilities until the day your time is up and you leave. So if you, if you are going to choose what kind of complexities to deal with, it would rather be the complexities of, I have a million dollars and I have to manage the complexities of this, than I have not enough, um, and, and, and where you draw the line. But at the same time, I'll also say this, being, understanding financial freedom also, or understanding like proper financial habits and goals also comes with that understanding that really, Enough is not a number. It's not one million. That's enough money. Enough is really at what level can you manage yourself? At what level can you manage your contentment, have an ordered life where you're not worried about the pressures of, you know, financial pressures and you can focus yourself on the things that, you know, drive your purpose, the things that you care about, you know, your family, your work, you know, the, the people around you, your long-term mission, you know, so, so that you're not, and there's always going to be, you're always, as long as you live in the world, you're always going to have to deal with some kind of financial complexity. But if you simplify it well enough, you know that, okay, you have, you achieve enough success that, you achieve enough success that you know that you can devote your attention on other things. So, um, this is one of the benefits of being part of, in our, part of our group, um, if I do say so myself, which is that we do learn a lot. I've learned so much, um, even, even as part of the people managing this group. But I'll also say this, that there is, there is part of what we built into Rise products. And so for those of you that don't know about Rise products, Rise Vest um, is designed to make it possible for you to be making progress toward these goals without you actively like living your day-to-day, -day, you know, everyday life to come and, you know, you start becoming a money manager. Um, that's part of the reason we designed Rise. And so um, now that I've gotten some of this perspective, I'm going to share my own thoughts and, and also how that ties into what we do at Rise. So the first thing is that, um, like Jesse pointed out, Achieving a million dollars is possible, even for someone in Nigeria, it is. And the how of it, so there's several ways. Um, there's four paths that most people have identified that people can achieve um, financial success. So the first path is, you know, you're the dreamer, dreamer, entrepreneur. Uh, you know, you started, the person that started Apple, the person that started um, Facebook, um, the, the person that started bringing it back down to home, um, a, a bank like GT Bank. So Fola, Fola, excuse me, Fola Dola and, um, and um, Tyra Derinoko. Um, at the time, um, some, of, some of their stories, that, you know, from what we've gleaned of their stories, it typically goes like, you know what? 
it would be nice if we could do X, Y, Z, right? So that's something I can relate to, right? Because again, we're, we're in that journey where I'm, I'm founder of Rise, along with my co-founders and my team, we're building um, a company. Um, and usually there's always a, it always starts from, it would be great if X, Y, Z, right? So uh, for Ladella and Taya, we're like, you know what? It would be great if there was a bank that's catered to, you know, the, I, I, I'm, I wasn't there, so I'm, I'm speculating. But I'm thinking, okay, I cater to like the younger demographic, people like us, you know, that is more, it's more savvy, you know, the service is top notch and you can really, um, you can relate to it because so I, I know when they started, you know, they were like, oh, you needed X, Y, Z minimum high amounts to start. But it's like the average person didn't have that. So they were just like, you know what, we can cater to you. You're a student, you're a young person, you're a trader. Um, and, and, and therefore they built a bank around trying to achieve, make this possible. And people resonated with that and started using it. And then it grew into what it became today. Um, or a company like ours, which is Rise, it really started from, you know what, devaluation has been a constant problem. My parents' generation, Naira, everybody's complaining about Naira. People have savings and their pensions and their retirement, but it's losing value over time. So someone that retired 20 years ago, maybe they're still getting like 5,000 every month. But 5,000 a month was like maybe okay. Like even 20 years ago might be a little too recent, but let's even say 20, 30 years ago, 5,000 a month might have worked. Um, or retiring with uh, 1 million Naira might have worked when you were like, like 20 years ago. But today, if you retire with one million, uh, you know that's that's what you parents for like one or two years, and then what, right? So there's 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 this idea that because naira is constantly losing value, and because we're in an economy where we we are import dependent, um, our long term our currency is pegged to the dollars. So the value of naira going down means that everything is getting more expensive, and your money is becoming less and less valuable over time. Um, you know, had one of those brain farts like, huh, I'm in the US, I'm working for Carla, they have a huge real estate portfolio. I've worked in the, in the equities department. I've seen how stock market can, can be. I've been doing this on my own. It would be great if someone in Lagos can connect to these same opportunities and earn their returns in dollars. It will solve the problem of devaluation. It will solve the problem of not enough investment opportunities to the average person. And then we made an intentional decision that, hey, okay, if we can do this, we have a choice of trying to aim for like, you know, the big boys in the market, but these guys already have money. So there's no fun in making money for them. It will be great if we can make it available to the average person, to the everyday person, so that they too can then hop on this ladder and try to grow their wealth in the long term, right? So that's, that's usually how dreamers go. You usually look at there's some kind of outcome. So I'm gonna highlight um, Jesse, uh, for instance, or Fumilaya. I'm gonna talk about both of you because I know a little bit about what you're doing. So Jesse's, Jesse's um, thesis, and so Jesse does, he, I, funny thing is I don't know what he does in his day job. I, I just realized that now. Um, Jesse, what do you do on your day job? I'm a marketing communication manager. Awesome. So I have a nine to five. So I go to like every other person in Lagos and I come back home like every other person in Lagos. But during the pandemic, I've been working. Your internet keeps spotting out again. So, but what I want to ask there is also now, what was the dream behind your, your business now? I don't even want to call it a side hustle because it's, it's becoming a business. But your nutrition business, what is and the fitness business, what is the dream behind it? What's, because that's the, that's the question we want to answer now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. So I said in my day job, I'm a marketing communication manager. Yes. Now, um, the, I don't really... We lost you again. Really, I didn't really have a big dream for the fit. What did I do, and how do I? Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to change my internet. Maybe you ask somebody else. I'll change my internet. Okay, cool. And and while I'm talking about that, so it doesn't have to be a big dream, like you know, a set up to. Oh, we're going to is like I said, the idea is always it. It goes with. It would be nice if 
X, Y, Z was, was available, right? Or if people could do X, Y, Z, and then you set out to provide that, that, that make that possible for them, right? So um, while he's fixing that internet, I'm gonna say, so one of the things that he spoke to me about um, when, when I decided to come in and, and, and work with him was simply, you know, it would be nice if you could lose weight, keep fit, you know, by, you know, managing your nutrition and essentially eating healthier and changing different, just changing your habits slowly in a way that is not invasive so that it just fits with your lifestyle, but you're still living, um, if, if, like you're still living a healthy, a nutritionally healthy life and you're keeping fit. Like that was, that was the pitch that, that he, he at least gave me. He's like, listen, you can, you can live your life exactly how you're living it make certain changes to your nutrition and your day-to-day -day. um things that you don't have to go to the gym and, and start running like five miles every day but it's like change your portions here and there drink water during this time of the day take, take this for breakfast make sure you, you do this every every um every evening and almost organically you see that oh you 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 kind of like have a very easy way to manage your fitness right but that to me is like that's that's the dream it's just a, it would be nice if, or what if we could do X, Y, Z, right? So people that tend to start a business and push it or, or, or tend to launch something um, that they want to see in the world, typically um, they are considered like dreamers. Dreamers, uh, that's, that's one category of wealth creation, right? Where you're doing what you love, you're trying to. So someone, some of you know Nikkei Arts Gallery. That's, that's someone that said, you know, it would be great if there's a place for you to see all these wonderful works of art and, and, and we'll pick out like the best um, artworks around the country and have a gallery where anybody can come in and view them and we pay for them. And it became a thing, right? And so she cares a lot about African art and she cares a lot about Nigerian culture and, and being managing that and presenting that to the world in a certain way. And so that's one path to financial success. And now one of the things that happen with this path is one, it has to be something you care a lot about. But secondly, it has to be something that you care about that people are willing to pay for. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're back. Um, so, but just, we'll come back to you, I guess, on another question, because I kind of like gave a brief overview. Um, but, um, so, so, you, if you are, if on a dreamer path, you care a lot about what you're working on, um, you care about the outcomes. You have that passion, right? Um, you're doing what you love, but it also has to be something that you have to present it in a way that it creates value for people so that they are willing to pay for it. And also you're willing to work at it for long, long, long hours and take the risk that it may not work out. But we also see that this path, it, it's riskier. Um, it's very up and down. There's a high chance of failing. But when you do succeed, the outcomes tend to be a lot better. So among the four paths to financial success, um, this path has the highest average net worth. Um, so the next path after that is the path that we call the virtual search, which is the people that are like extraordinarily talented or not even extraordinary, but they have some very strong talent and they have like, a, they've honed that talent for a lot of time. And then they, they use that talent they push that talent into the world to really delight and entertain and or or do things that are remarkable and then they build up their financial success that way so that's where the um footballers soccer stars you know the the project mbappe is where where you see people who go from academy to like a professional team to like national team and really become like soccer athletes or become like you know the usain boats of this world or the, the Victor Simehins of this world. Um, <clears throat> that's also where you see the musicians of this world, you know, the Files, the Burner Boy, um, the, the Wish Kids, um, you know, the King Sonia days, where they really hone the talent and they use that talent to build up their, 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 um, their audience and achieve some level of financial success that way. Um, that's where you see the actors. Um, so people that, again, do very highly specialized talents, um, and it's not a path that is open to everyone, even though, again, if you want to, if you recognize the talent and you hone it, you know, you can, you can achieve success that way, but it usually takes time. Um, 
So, and a lot of them are well off, there is, but it's just such a small number out of so many, right? Um, because it takes a lot of skill. Um, and then the third path is the, the company climbers, the corporate climbers, the, you know, so today, Shegun Agbaje runs GT Bank, right? He didn't found the bank. So the founders of the bank were the dreamers, but he started, you know, a bit lower level, and then he climbed up the ladder. Um, I, know, I remember he came from, from, from Harvard Business School, and then he worked under the founders, run, ran different departments, achieved certain goals, and gradually um, grew to take over the bank, right? Um, so um, there, are, there are others who may never even be like the leader of the company, but they rise up to a certain position. You see like salespeople, you know, departmental heads, um, people that are, you know, distributors for certain well-known FMCGs where they are climbing up their ranks and they, they tend to accumulate a high net worth because the pay is high and that that's category also tends to need, you know, you need to first be working for a successful company or a company that is growing fast. You have to also be doing, performing so well that your own um, growth within that company, you're also growing within the company. Um, your financial compensation also needs to be very clear and um, typically it's also tied to some kind of outcome, right? So, so that when you achieve those outcomes, so you see you know, a lot of these company clients achieve stock options or bonuses or grants uh, or, or high level of compensation because they help the company achieve certain goals, right? So as you, and, and that, that also requires um, the ability to manage relationships and network and build. So some people will tell you that, you know, it's, unless it's entrepreneurship, but it's like, it's not true, right? So there are people today that work at Stanbic that I know of um, that make millions every year, right? The highest paid CEOs in Nigeria, almost all of them take home at least a million dollars um, or, or in that neighborhood every year, um, just in straight cash or, or compensation, right? So it's possible. Um, and then the last path, which is the savior, saver, invest, saver investor path, um, this is the path that most people don't see because one, it's the most common path to achieving this goal. It's the most common path to achieving the financial success that we're talking about. Um, most of the people who end up achieving this goal through the saver investor path. The saver investor path is you earn a, a, at least minimum of a middle class income, right? So if you earn a middle class income, because that way you are no longer in survival mode. Uh, I don't know if, when we were still having physical meetings in January, we talked about the, the, the financial pyramid where if you are at the way bottom, you are basically in negative. You're not even up to financial, you're not even in survival mode. You're like taking on, taking on, um, you're taking on debt and you're just struggling to even make it out, right? And then there's a level where you break even, where you're not, you're barely making by, but at least you're paying for it and you're staying in the same place. But the third level is usually where you're a bit more secure and now you can start picking out savings. Um, you can say, okay, I can spend a little less than what I'm making so I can save at least 20% every month. Some people are saving higher. And so some of the people on this call, as finally, some of them are also people who are very disciplined with their savings. And this path is, from that level, is where you can start climbing the ladder. But climbing that ladder with a saver investor path means that, one, you're saving and investing consistently every month. You're, you're growing your income. And as your income is growing, the money you're putting away is growing. And as you're getting better at saving, as you're getting more disciplined with your finances, you're putting away more and more money into your investments. And so that over time, as those investments also start compounding and growing, um, you start seeing that they, they, they start to multiply and grow even faster than your contributions till you get to a point where you realize that I can live off the returns from these investments. Majority of those who achieve financial success go through this path. Majority of them also is the path that has the highest likelihood of success because you know, while there are ups and downs along the journey, if you maintain a steady path, if you, if you remain consistent over time, it's almost a no-brainer that it will happen. The problem is also that that's the path that is hardest to see because most people that live like this, you are not going to know 
how successful they are because they're not going to be loud. Secondly, you're not going to see them and immediately know that. Nobody will come and tell you, oh, do you know how wonderful of an investor I am? Let me tell you, right? It just doesn't come up in the conversation as much. You can see, you know, if someone's an actor, you see them roll by, you know what they do, right? You can see a football player, you see them, ah, you know what they do, you can get motivated by that. If someone is a business person, even those of us that are like founders, you can still see what we do and you get some motivation out of that. Nobody, unless they are sitting with you and sharing, like Jesse was saying, sharing his, their spreadsheet and showing you what they do behind the scenes. Nobody walks around saying, you know what? I invest 50% of my income every month. Look at me, like come and learn how to do it. It just doesn't show. So you are not likely to, but there's a lot of them. And someone did a study about this where, you know, someone talked about the silent, uh, the, the, the millionaire next door, where most of the millionaires, they were talking about America, most of the really successful millionaires, you would never know that they were that successful because they, it just doesn't, you know, their lifestyle doesn't show it. Their conversation doesn't show it. Just looking at what they do don't, won't necessarily show it. But that's the path that most of us have the best chance of. And, and the beautiful thing about this path is that you can be on any of the other three and still be on this path. You can be a founder and be disciplined with your savings and investments and achieve this goal. So before I continue, going on and, and we're getting we're getting into the meat of the conversation um i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask a few questions with you know some people have identified so if you if you, when you hear these four things that i've shared if you recognize which path you're on so some people have said you know i mean I'm, I'm a dreamer path and some some are saying you know i don't i've not seen company climbers but if you are if you are in any of these categories you know just put it in the chat box as well and say hey you know, this is the part that I'm on. This is the part that I think I am. And then we'll dive into the meat of this um, saver investor path. So, but for the million dollar question, for me and the math behind what we built, uh, the product that we built, which is RiseVest, that allows you to invest towards dollars. The idea is if you can save $500 monthly, $500 monthly in less than 30 years. And 30 years seems like a very long time, but really, um, all right, yeah, Sharon, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what you're saying, but really, if you're 25, 30 years is by the time you're 55, right? You want to have a million dollars. You, you are going, if you can stay, $500 monthly throughout that duration, you are going to have $1.3 million by the time you retire, by, by 30 years time. So the question now is, if you want to now, there's, there's, flex, there's a flexibility about it because, so like some of you have said, you don't necessarily want to have $1 million, right? So as of today's rate, that's like 400 and something million there. Honestly speaking, even for me, I don't think it's not that necessary, right? Um, but you can, you can cascade the goal down. So if you do 250, 250 every month, you are guaranteed almost 500 to 600,000 at the end of that period, right? Which is over 200 million there. Now, in most, most areas in Nigeria, um, if you retire with 200 million there, you're generating 10% return uh, on that annually. Right when you when you're technically done, you're generating twenty million naira every uh, every year. Um, you live well in almost every corner of Nigeria, almost every corner. Right. So um, for some of us, for some of us, um, yes. And if you do higher, if you do a thousand, if you do a thousand dollars monthly, um, if you do a thousand, so those of you that can do a thousand dollars monthly you cut that time out. It's, it's actually by a lot more than half. Because again, if you are starting higher, compounding also happens a bit faster. But generally, it will be like around half, um, half the time, right? Um, so I'm not being exact with the math because the first thing to anchor is not the math. The math, I can whip up a spreadsheet. Matter of fact, we have so many calculators that can do this for you. Um, but I have a spreadsheet that we use when we are building our products, when we're developing our products. 
really, um, we, we, we try to say, okay, if someone is doing uh, $200 a month and they are earning average return of, say, 10% annually, um, we can project the next 20, 30 years. We have a spreadsheet that does that, right? Um, so the, 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 the rate is, I actually use 10%. Um, 10% is our conservative rate um, because, you know, sometimes you earn above that. Sometimes you earn below that. Um, but um, ultimately, and yes, we, we do account for that inflation as well. But ultimately, um, you, you realize that if you can generate returns of 10% and you can put away $1,000 a month, probably in the next 15, 20 years, you're going to never have to worry about money again. If you can do 500 a month, you might have to extend it. If you can do 250 a month, you either expend the time to me or you go like half the amount. But for most of us, the problem is not even the, the final amount, right? For most of us, that's not the challenge. The challenge is one, being consistent with your investment, even seeing the plan, the path forward, making, seeing it and knowing that, oh, this is achievable. For a lot of us, what's our constraint is the boundaries of what we think is achievable. And that's what RISE was specifically designed for. This is why we do what we do. We, we built a product where you can start putting money away every month into like different assets um, that are going to earn a stable, emphasis on stable long-term return. So, in any single year, we might not have the highest returns because that's not what we're optimizing for. What we're optimizing, even though in a lot of times we outperform what we accept as our expected return, we outperform it, right? But that's not because of any special, it's when we select assets as prudently as we can, then the market generates the, whatever returns it generates. And sometimes it's gonna do massively better than we expected. And in some cases it's gonna do massively less than we expected. But at the same time, if you stick to that path um, over the long term, you're going to get to that destination. So it's possible. And the question now is, okay, what can I do to make sure that I can put away this money every month? So that's where some of our panelists are going to be helpful because I know some of them here, they are very disciplined with savings. Some of them also have their um, side hustles where they are building. And so I kind of want um, two people that haven't spoken yet um, to kind of give us their thoughts on how do you help, how do you make sure that you're putting away these funds every month and how has RISE been helpful to you growing, um, growing your investments and, and being disciplined with this investment over the however long you've been using RISE. So I want to, to pick Busola, um, I know you haven't said anything on here except on the chat box a bit. So um, can you quickly give us um, a brief of, you know, how you're able to maintain... Okay, hi. Yes. Uh, hi, okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, your question is, how do you put away money? Yeah, how can you every month? Assistance? Yes. Okay. Um, so I would... Uh, it's pretty basic you understand um before you start investing you should have a working budget and now and not just a budget a goal so the budget is not just going to tell you about your expenses and your inflows but a goal a total goal um, that contains how you manage your money do you understand and, and for me i'll use myself as an example um, so I still work nine to five, mm -hmm. do you understand? So I would really speak on that um, side whereby people are actually um, getting a kind of stable amount every month, do you understand? Yeah. So you can decide to say, okay, I have a, a, a spreadsheet. I don't just, I don't just sound too, too cliche like, <laughs> okay, everything is about spreadsheet, but I mean, I mean, if you're going to take this investment thing serious, you should get yourself... But the spreadsheet is the magic. It is. Yes, so, really yes, so just, you, you should get yourself, you should get yourself a spreadsheet and um, um, pen to paper. Do you understand? Put that, those, those figures down. Know what you're working with and how you want to grow. 
you understand? So um, the first thing I do is to allocate my funds. I already know what percentage they, they are standard, um, what do they call it, money allocation strategies out there, like the 50, 30, 20, and the rest. But mm -hmm. I've been able to tailor it to my own um, needs and my own self. Do you understand? And immediately... I get my alert so that I do not fall into that temptation of maybe overspending or um, spending my investment money. I treat my investment as an as as a bill. Do you understand? Like I mean, you would pay your your NEPA bill without fail or your water bill without fail, with uh, regardless of of if you have it or not, unless you stay in darkness. Do you understand? So I I, I treat it as a bill. Do you understand? It has an allocated um, um, percentage of my inflow. So I know that, okay, immediately I get that alert. That day, that is when I just sit down and a lot of things start moving. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, is it 20% here goes to this, 30% here goes to that, 10%. Every, that same day, I don't even allow the next day to come. I just move everything to where I need to 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 you know allocate it i have a rule that says that if any money is left in my account it's actually to be spent do you understand because every other thing has been um allocated to his um to his uh, various place whether it's an emergency fund and i i ensure that okay i have a different account or a different uh, fund for my emergency fund then my investment tends to rise do you understand that same day i don't i don't feel on that it's, it's an expense for me so um i've decided to allocate a particular percentage to rise uh investments a particular percentage to other investments that i have you understand then i look at my spreadsheets i now log it in i log that amount in to know that okay yes i've done that for this for this um uh, for this month you understand then yeah. i know that okay i have a goal fortunately it's it's very awesome that you brought up um, brought up this how to retire with one million do you understand because it's actually uh a fire goal of mine <laughs> to, to do that you know uh, but but um it's very possible as jesse and and the others have said right it's very possible if you can break it down now it one million seems like a a, a lot but if you can break it down to small chunks like um little steps to take to that goal and you have to also know that um ak you mentioned something about 500 dollars monthly and for 10 percent year um, and um, per annum will take you like 30 to 31 years to to hit that one million dollars goal that's that's awesome and that's great you should also know that as you are if you're in active uh, employment or you began to pick up a particular side also or a particular business to to increase your inflow and increase your capital, you should know that over time that money would increase. I mean, your contributions to your investments will increase. Mm -hmm. So you should not just see it as, oh, I have just $100 to, to put in. Ah, that means it will take me 90 years. No, <laughs> you should also factor in your growth period. Mm -hmm. You should know that you yourself, you are also growing in your careers. You will earn more in your, in your, what do they call it? In whatever you want to do. And please, please, please put in, put in side hustles. Now I have a rule to, um, all my side, hundred percent of all my side hustle money is going to my investments. Please hundred. No, no fail. It, the only one that has an allocation is even my salary, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Right. 100% like I have some people want to do 10 years I'm pushing myself for 5 to 7 <laughs> years man I'm pushing myself for that right. and it's, it's it's something I'm and this journey is very interesting because you meet people along the way I, I, another thing I want to quickly um, drop before I I, I, mm. I leave is mm. um you should have like there's something Rise is doing that is very that is amazing right it's not it's something that we've always wanted in nigeria but we haven't we 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 had no opportunity to to invest in dollar denominated funds right right here in nigeria and that opportunity has opened up and the the opportunities are just endless 
Do you understand? Because it, this thing is just a, a spreadsheet stuff, right? And you, w w the group on its own, that's the Telegram group, is more like a support group to ensure that you can meet like-minded people to achieve your goals together. So um, try to form support groups, people that are going the same way, right? Uh, maybe in this journey together. I and Jesse are actually in one support group, right? And it has been fantastic and amazing. So we we have many goals and we know that, okay, this is what we want to do. So it's it makes the journey actually fun and it makes it achievable. It's not just only you now. And you can take advantage of the Telegram group that Rise um, has to actually ask your questions and uh, meet those goals. It's right. very possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Busola. This was, I feel like clapping for you because that was very thorough and it hit all the right notes. Um, so I'll tell you that, um, and for those, of, this is really for attendees. Um, so we, I'll, I'll, I'll share the spreadsheet that, I, that we have where, you know, you can, and eventually maybe we'll actually, instead of sharing that spreadsheet, we'll make it a calculator, but um, it will also be in the group where you can really track Oh, this is how this um, these amounts plus this interest over this time um, it adds up to 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 what I achieve over like to my retirement number, right? Or this the amount that you retire with. Um, and retirement again, you can shorten the length of time by increasing the contributions. You can increase your contributions by so we selected two categories of people for our panel and, and um, that, that was one people who are consistent with their investments and secondly people who have some kind of side hustle that they are pursuing and the reason for that being that once you get locked into this mindset that oh all I need to do is, is put away XYZ over time consistently you realize that okay there's two ways you can do that your 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 income from your salary grows uh, and you put it, put that away. And secondly, you get, you try to like find other sources of income. You know, you start a side business, you do services on the side, you, you, you earn other income here and there and you put that towards your goal. So it kind of like makes it where, so I tell a lot of people, if you're having challenges with um, being financially disciplined, it's usually because you've not seen the goal that you should be shooting at because left to its own left to our, our devices if we're just doing things you know we're, we're just going to be doing whatever as it comes so you make more money you know you blow you blow money you, you spend a little bit more at your friend's party or on some nice you know you know you buy a nice device here or you buy a nicer car you move into a nicer house because it's just the you know our, our natural there was a post i wrote to medium when i was talking to people about i was trying to get a lot of perspectives because we really try to use what we gain from what we from talking to users to inform what we build for rise as a pro, as our products right so i was talking to a lot of people and trying to understand how we think about money and i realized that culturally we almost all just think about money as something to spend even me saying it now you just be like okay wait is money not something to spend like that's just our default is money is something we spend and you realize that you don't realize it's not just the way everyone thinks about money until you run into people who are financially disciplined and successful or you run into other cultures where they think about savings and they think about you know building like or contributing to society or creating wealth as an active thing as an active responsibility not just something that you do because it's nice or you're successful but they, they look at it as something everyone is supposed to do and one of the first foundational things they make you understand is that money is not something you just spend. Money is a seed. You plant for different results or you invest for different outcomes. But the money that comes into your hands, if you sit down today and you calculate the money that you've made or that's flowing through your accounts as an as employee or whatever, and you compare it with money that you have right now, you realize that most of the money that comes into your, your hands then lives by the other. And that is a mindset that is a mindset that needs to shift. But when it will shift is when you realize that if I can lock down hundred dollars, every time money flows into my hands, I can lock down hundred dollars. Hundred thousand hundred dollars is like forty something thousand today. 
if I can lock that down every time, just like Busola does, put it somewhere and know that whatever is left is money I can now spend. That's a very smart budgeting strategy. It's like if I lock it into my investments, I'll just spend what's left. You realize over time that as your life is going, your base of assets is growing. And you start to see that. Can I keep it something about the practicality of that mindset shift that you're talking about? Please, please go ahead. You see, um, I'm a salary earner. Yes. Before now, um, I didn't pay much attention to my side also. I was just doing it like hobby. But I now discovered that I want to save more because I can see the picture of the future very clearly. Mm. It's so crystal clear. I can see the pathway. Now, the only thing standing in my way is I'm not earning enough. If Boom. I'm earning enough and I can invest more, I can shorten the amount of time it will take me to get to my fire goal. That's my, the amount of money I need to retire. Like I would said, people have different amounts. Work with your amount with the lifestyle you want. So what I simply did was I turbocharged my side also. And my brain went into overdrive. How okay. Boom. So I, I am not only working on my fitness business. I discovered that a lot of people are also asking me about financial education. They, they keep asking me and I spend sometimes 30 to 45 minutes speaking to people on the phone. That's my time. Time is expensive. I know people will have me for it. I charge money. If I speak to you <laughs> on the phone for one hour, you pay me money. And I'll give you value. Yes. And I tell you, even people in my office are already very excited about this. I showed them the picture. I showed them my spreadsheet. And they're like, why didn't they know all this all along? So what I'm saying oh. is, I'm now able to start writing a book. Okay? I am not a good writer. I don't even speak <laughs> good English. But let me tell you what I've done. I have hired an editor. A creative editor. Yes. And I'm going to do a combination of audio recording my book and writing my book and the um, creative editor will write my book for me. Mm. And I intend to automate my book online to give me residual income. You will buy it, you get an email, all the transaction will complete without me touching anything and I will just be mm. receiving a lot. Pam, 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 pam. That's, but that's another what? revenue source. Unlocked. What am I thinking about it? It's my goal that is making me think about it. And you know one thing, like Busola said, this journey is very interesting. Since morning, I have been writing the structure for that book, and it's very enjoyable. And you know what? Four people already paid for the book. Boom. So what I'm simply saying is, that's my own style. Everybody should find their own style. My age is not the same as your own. The amount of money I want is not the same as your own. But you see, if I want one million US dollar, with this my mindset, I will get it. And like you said, if my money increases, I don't increase my lifestyle. Yep. You that, see, was, that was exactly where I was about to jump in next. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Before, before now, I'm going to go a little bit personal. Before now, I used to buy a new iPhone every year since 2012. I will sell the old one and then I will buy a new one. So, but there's a, there's a difference. So I lose at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But I told myself, nobody will tell me anything. I said, this life is one. I can't keep myself. I will enjoy it. I like the food. I will use it. <laughs> so I enjoy my money. But the truth of the matter is, as I grow older, I will sometimes, I will soon retire. I won't be an active service. I will, it's like I'm eating my future. Boom. You know, so sometimes we, we can be so deceptive in our way if we don't really think very critically. That is to say, we're very 25, true. 26, we're earning, you're earning. You probably won't be able to imagine in your mind what's going to happen when you are 45. What's going to happen when you are 40. But for me, it's a lot clearer in my mind now because I'm getting closer to that age. And it's a pity I didn't realize it when I was younger. So right yeah. now, I can see it very clearly and draw it closer. And like, Busola now is going to be able to achieve faster than me, but don't <laughs> compare your chapter two. Don't compare your chapter two with another person's chapter 22. Exactly. So, so everybody can run the race. I'll stop there.
exactly. So and and again, very very amazing, um, very amazing uh, uh, perspectives. So Jesse, like you, I'm writing a book as well, um, a, a personal finance guide guidebook as well. So, but the, the the reason you're writing is the same reason I'm writing because you realize that for for me it was like, oh, this is something I've known. For instance, I know when. Um, so my former my co-founder at my other at my other um, my previous company, Bycoins. Um, I remember when we were doing YC, and one of the things they would say is, "Dude, you've been using this iPhone. I was using iPhone SE, right? And there is like there are chips on the screen, and I've been using it for like three years." I'm like, bro, my style is if I get one iPhone, I'm going to use it until the value, in fact, like if the screen drops, I'll fix it, whatever. But I'm going to use it until it can't work functionally. It starts to become a drag and then I replace it. But until then, I'm not replacing anything for vanity, for vanity metrics, the SE gang, right? So now I use this one because um, I happen to lose my phone in an Uber. And um, I kept calling the Uber guys. They didn't replace it. But again, these are mindset shifts that have happened for me a long time ago because I started out with, okay, I started investing. I said, when I started investing, I remember the very, so I've been investing since secondary school, um, trying to like do different things. But they, they, they really, the time when the mindset shift happened was in college. And, and so I started with $600. And once you start something and you gradually start to see I use the analogy of, of, of a seed where if you spend all your money, it's almost like you, 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 you are being, you're getting a bag of seeds and you're eating it all while someone else is eating only a portion and planting the rest. So Jesse has now locked into that mindset where, okay, I can plant my seeds and this is the harvest I can get out of that. And therefore, how can I get more seed? That's what is driving the side income. That's what's driving, you know, paying for my time. Because it's like every time I'm not spending growing my farm is time that I'm losing, right? You are not going to have, your productive years are not are finite. So Jesse has this on point. Busola now has started it again early, earlier because that knowledge, once you, there's something we're saying, even once you wake up, that's your morning, right? So once you realize that this is a better outcome that you, and you know it's achievable and you are the only one in your way a lot of the things you spend money on will lose the attraction they will completely lose the attraction so keep, keep this in mind um another thing i want to highlight jesse has mentioned it and um, busola has mentioned it so they said fire go and i know some of you i don't know if some of you know what that fire go means um so if you want to know what that fire goal means, let me give them one minute um, because I know what it means. To me, it's, it's a lifestyle at this point. But um, what's a fire goal so that the audience will also hear and understand and tap into it? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Iki. So fire actually means, um, is F-I-R-E, mm -hmm. um, financial independence, retire early. Right. So some people are on a F-I journey. Some people are on a FIRE journey. That's financial independence journey. Why others are, you know, they want to just retire early. And um, as AK said in the beginning, have time for other things you get. So the fire goal is um, basically that. So how it is done or it's calculated is um, you calculate your yearly expenses. You understand? That means your entire yearly expense and you can buffer it. I did. I buffered mine a lot because I, I, I also added other things to it. I took into consideration other factors mm -hmm. um, into it. So you can buffer it. Then you multiply that by 25. So um, 25 is the, is the number that is allocated to it to ensure that, okay, you can be able to live on. So when you hit that, um, that number, right? The, your expense, yearly expense, whether you bu whether it is buffered or it is accurate times twenty five, then you can basically live on four percent of your investment yearly. Yeah. So um, you should also know that that amount or those those assets or investments are actually income generating. So they are also generating 
money for you. So it's not as if you've gotten the one million and it's sitting in your accounts. You get and you're like, okay, I'll be taking five to four four percent out of it. No, it's 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 money that is working for you. You understand? So yeah. and it's building generational wealth at that moment, at that point. So that you're talking about inheritance, things you can you can you can um, leverage out to your loved ones and all that. So that's a goal. So uh, as you said, uh, as just ah, oh, it'll happen. It's probably nice for, but I can take it's different okay, across cool. um, your expenses and all that. Awesome. Yeah. So, so that is what fire is all, all right. about. Sorry, cool go story. I, I think I've shared this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. yeah so, a cool story. I think I've shared this um, in in some groups um, about a couple that actually. Ah. Uh. Internet. He age 40. You understand? They went to live in Portugal. You know, very amazing story. Both of them uh, both of them were just very dogged about it, doing a lot of side hustles with their nine to five. And once they hit that, those that money is actually still in investment. They, were, they are even government now they, on it. they were government workers. Yes. So they yeah, were they were making, government. They're not making a ton. So, yeah. so yeah. let me so to, to bring to bring this conversation back home. Um so first thing is, there is there is there is a joy that you get once you realize that see the ultimate wealth is freedom. The problem is that we are not we are not always opportune to even when we find out this information right. Even when we learn about this these models, right? There's not a lot of avenues where we can now practically tap into them. And for a lot of people, see, when you're talking about things on a, on a, just to talk about them, it doesn't hit home. We usually, when you want to learn how to do something, start by doing it, right? So for us as a company, for RISE as a product, this is what we built RISE for, right? So if you want to just, if you, if you start investing $5 every month, you and I, I can bet you, right? I can bet you with every, um, with every confidence that I have, six months from now, you'll probably be investing like 20. Because once you get used to it and realize that I can put away more and I don't miss it, and then you start seeing that money add up and you start seeing it generate returns, you want to do more. And that's one yeah. thing. The second thing I want to say is calculating your retirement number or, uh, you know, your FIRE goal. And, and Emeka, you asked a question about, you know, safety of funds um, and, and how RISE secures our investments and, and how we do all of that. I will tell you, please, I'm going to address that one generally for the entire, so we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about RISE and how we're structured and as we wrap this call up, but also join the Telegram group send us an email at hello at rise.capital um, so that if there are specific questions you have, please go ahead and, and, and ask us through those channels, hello at rise.capital or join our Telegram group. And please, if you're on here and you're not using Rise, download RiseVest, R-I-S-E space V-E-S-T um, on the app or Play Store. It's an, it's an app that allows you to do dollar investments as seamlessly as possible. But so, to, to talk about your retirement goal. So what you're achieving, you're killing two birds in one stone. One is you're working hard, you're putting funds away, and you're growing your investments to the point where you can now, you know, you can basically get off the rat race. You start seeing, if your side income, once you hit your goal, your side income does not say, oh, or your side hustle, your side business doesn't say, oh, okay, I've hit, you have hit the goal. Let me stop making money. It keeps making you money. Or your salary keeps coming in because if it's what you love, or you can go do something entirely new. And when you start doing work because it's what you want to do, because you're just doing whatever is available because you have to survive, there's a massive difference. But that way you achieve financial success, you live a financially okay life, you can afford certain things and you can work to enjoy your work. But also when you now live off the, the money that you've built up, the, the, the money that you've saved, 
um, you're living mostly off. So the, the way the fire goal or the retirement number works is that, so I calculate my living expenses, like say 500,000 naira every month. Um, so I need roughly like 6 million naira every year to take care of my living expenses. So if I have enough investments that say within six, 7% of that return on, on that, maybe 10, maybe five, you, you, you depend on, on how risky you want to go, but there's usually like anywhere from like four to 10% um, that you can generate annually without taking on too much risk. Um, so you, let's say that you're, you're doing that. And so you have 60 million naira put away somewhere in your different investments, plus your, your side income is generating so that by, by your, your living expenses is taken care of. So that means that you can live on that 6 million. And, and again, as it's growing over time, that's where um, you also know you're spending down some of that principal because let's say the next year, the first year is 6 million, next year is seven, you account for inflation and all of that. But by the time you finally, you know, for, for all of us, we, we don't like to talk about it, but eventually some, we're all going to die eventually, right? So your old, your, 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 your final moments, you know, that money that you've put away that you've been living on the returns from is now something you add, you know, hopefully all of you have a will, um, but you cannot tell your children, hey, you know, this is where you start with. At least I have this in place. So now you can start from there and build on. That's how generational wealth happens because you're able to go from just thinking that, oh, I have to live on all the money that my business or my salary pays me. I have to spend it all on living. When if something that happens to your income, your your s out of luck, or you know you 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 discipline yourself, build up your investments, get to a point where you now have a base of assets that is paying for your lifestyle, and when you're no longer here, that base of assets can transfer to your offspring or to your loved ones or to a cause that you care about, and you can use that money to do more, right? So so that's that's something that and that's around where we're going to start summarizing this call so i'm going to jump into talking about rice so first off we built rice so that people can do long-term investments in dollars and i'll tell you the why of it i've hinted at it before if you go back to say early eight early 80s right so i was born late 80s um um yeah so I'm even getting to the to that point where I have to start thinking like Jesse, you know, it's like 10 years from now, I'll be, I'll be 39. Um, and so I'll be 40 practically because I'm, I'm a month, I'm a month away. So the point is you, you, you go back 30 years ago and a hundred thousand naira was almost $200,000, right? So if you had a hundred thousand naira income, you're making, the $200,000, uh, um, $200, what someone making $200,000 in America today would make it, which is vastly beyond the average Nigerian, right? So in that time, $100,000 has gone from $200,000 to roughly $208 at the last time I did that calculation. So if you had your money, you are putting money away in Naira all these years, you know, you are saving with, uh, the big bank here, you're saving, you're buying properties here, you're doing a lot of things in Naira. And I'm not saying don't have investments in Naira. We live in Nigeria, you're going to spend money in Naira. But your long-term investments, the money that you want to put away for a longer period to try to achieve certain goals, you want, you want to start your business, you know that you need 50 million Naira to start your business and it's going to take you five years to save that up. Well, after five years, is 50 million Naira going to still be 50 million Naira? Not likely. Maybe by then, you realize that, oh, shoot, I need 100 million naira now, and I just have 50. So it's almost like you're on this treadmill where it's all going down and you're racing against gravity. But if you had dollars, if you were putting your money away in dollars um, in the same period, right, you would hold the value of your, your investments. And then whatever returns you earn would then grow the value of your investments over time. So that's the first reason. The second reason is, if you're investing, you, your investments are not going to outperform the economy they are tied to. So I use this analogy. If I bought GT Bank today, if I invested in GT Bank today, GT Bank is roughly a $10 billion bank, right? In terms of assets, maybe more. I don't know, but in that neighborhood, 
and I want to gain 10% annual return from that investment over the next 10 years, that means that 10 years from today, GT Bank should be a 20 billion bank in that time frame for my investments to pay off well. So then you ask yourself, what exactly is going to drive GT Bank from 10 billion today to 20 billion? They are already among the biggest banks in Nigeria for sure. Yeah. And how much bigger are they going to get within Nigeria? I don't know. No, but every other bank is not going to shut down so that GT Bank will be the only bank. So it's not very likely. Well, they can expand beyond Africa, but then that, beyond Nigeria into other countries in Africa. One, that's something they're already doing too. That comes with all its own incremental costs, right? So that doesn't necessarily translate to straight up value. It's going to be harder. Meanwhile, if I see a, one of the stocks in Rise's portfolio is um, um, U.S. Bank Corp. It's like a regional U.S. bank. Um, it's only available in four states at the moment. Um, but they are growing into, they are, they, are, they are powering into other states. They are also powering a lot of the, the states that they are in is, is very heavy on the agricultural side. So that bank operating in four or five states in the U.S. Midwest is already a $600 billion bank because the size of the economy, the size of the market, the size of the capital, where they, that they, the level of access to capital that they can get, the fact that they are, they, are, they are really powered by the Reserve Bank of Kansas, which is attached to the Federal Reserve Bank in, 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 in DC, right? So they have access to the US Fed in terms of getting their financing and their low interest rates and being able to give more to banks. So it's like, in the next 10 years, which of those two banks are likely to grow faster and get bigger and achieve like doubling its size in, in, in a decade, which has the higher likelihood, or even if they don't double its size, which has the higher likelihood of profitability, right? So we're solving access to investments that are also much better, much better in terms of growth, much better in terms of market. So Facebook has a global market. Tesla has a global market. Um, a company like Trade Desk has a uh, uh, like a global market. So Trade Desk does like the um, they they have they power the infrastructure for like online like the way you do digital ads, right? So it's almost like an auction site where the, the number of traffic to any website plus the views uh, plus the area that website is serving. So serving Nigeria, there's like things that they know about. But it automatically calculates how much you could you should price. Um, digital ads in different markets and sets the price and then people are bidding, companies are bidding for their ads to be placed in those locations. So the infrastructure that powers that is, is, is built by a company called Trade Desk and they have a few competitors but they're the leader. Um, and, and, and those are companies that you may not know about on an average, on, on an av average day um, because you're not interfacing with them as a consumer. So the Facebook is one of their biggest customers. Google is one of their biggest customers. Um, every other company that runs digital ads interfaces with them in some way. But they are not coming to you and saying, hey, you know, pay me, um, pay me for, um, you know, Abimbola, like pay me this amount of money for your ads. It's like you don't see them. Um, so, but they are a very profitable, long-term growing company. You don't, there's no, there's no company like, there are a few companies trying to do that in Nigeria, but it's just not the same thing. So we're solving access to long-term investments. So we have like rental portfolio across the US where different markets have different demographic information and, and the earnings power and the rental markets here are well-developed, right? And so we are saying, hey, you're investing in, not just in dollars one, two, you're investing in some of the best um, uh, opportunities around the world. And we're not limiting ourselves to the US. We're just in the US now, um, but as we grow, we're also branching. So we're already talking to, some companies about you know uh, sourcing Indian companies, Chinese companies that we can also put as our investments. Um, so I mentioned Trade Desk, I mentioned Tesla, I mentioned um, Facebook for those asking. But really, um, we're solving access problem as well. We're making it possible for your money to be invested in the best opportunities globally, so that you can earn those long-term returns. The third thing we're solving for though is the expertise problem which is, I don't know how many of you here are financial experts, but even a lot of financial experts don't have enough experience, knowledge, and information to sit on 
the stock markets and vet companies for investments or read through their 10K annual reports. Um, the one that is in finance and agri is, is a bank. It's not an agri. I, I say it powers. So the economy that it relies on is basically the U.S. Agri agricultural like basin. So a lot of the, the major um, farming, farming regions in the U.S. Um, is where U.S. Bank Corp operates in. But the bank is U.S. Bank Corp and it's a bank. Um, so, but, you know, you are there, you are, you're not reading annual reports, you're not reading, calculating this, their, their financial models and saying, okay, what's their cost of capital, what's their profit margin, what's their return on investments, what's their management, what's their return on assets, what's their growth rate. Um, there's so many factors that you have to consider. Well, how much leverage are they using? Um, how strong is their balance sheets? What's their free cash flow? Um, you know, there's a million things that go into each investment that you're doing. And so most people, what they do and most places, you, you just don't have enough time to do all of that analysis well. And so we're saying, don't worry about it. What most people realize is that the biggest source of financial capital for you is the job you already do or the business you run, the expertise you have where you are being paid to do that. So you need to devote a lot of your time and energy into maximizing your earnings as an individual, maximizing your earnings potential. So your earnings potential is how much can you make in income as a person based on what you know, based on the energy you have, based on the occupation you do, based on the markets you operate in, based on a lot of things. When you are really making all the income you could potentially make as a person. What does that look like? For most of us, we make maybe half of what our real potential is, right? Because, you know, we'll come back after we're tired or we, we chill. We have a lot of chill time. I tell some people sometimes that, and it's not a, it's not a, it's not, we're not intrinsically lazy, I think, because people have said that we're not. We're not a, by far. But I just think culturally, right? We have so much free time. And it's not a bad thing, we, but it's also something that you have to be aware of. We have so much chill time that it's like, do we realize that we don't have ultimately all the time in the world to be productive, right? But I'm not here to say, oh, you know, we need to change certain things about our culture. What I'm, the point I'm trying to make is just that as people, as an individual, you could probably make a lot more money if you are structured about your time and say, okay, this is the time that I have to work. Let me go out there and work, right? So. So um, there's that Bible, Bible verse that comes to mind. It's like, uh, go to the ants, you know, because like they, they labor and, and work like back and forth and then they keep putting away um, everything they are working so that when they are finally in the winter time and they can't move around, they have a storehouse to eat from, right? Um, so that's something that it requires discipline. But the best outcome is you are focusing on generating as much income as an individual as you can doing the things you care about, doing the work you're paid for, doing opportunities, the opportunities I can never take advantage of. You know, no matter how much I'm passionate about side hustle, I can never do what's just, well, let me not say I can never do what Jesse's doing because, but it's not, it's not my thing, right? I'm not a fitness enthusiast as much, um, but I've, I've enjoyed the benefits of his expertise because he's free to do it. And then he gives that to me um, and I pay him for it. And I give him the benefits of my financial knowledge and expertise, and he pays me for it. And so um, when you do what you're specialized at and you're making the best income, Rise then makes that income do its best work for you. We, you put it into Rise, we do all the sourcing of investments. We, there's a medium post that we have. Um, so um, if you please share, share the post about how we select Start and we're going to do some about how we select our real estate and fixed income portfolio because even now we're vetting certain certain institutions about their fixed income strategies that we want to also add to our portfolio. Um, but we've spent a lot of time, effort, um, objective criteria, design algorithms, work on different things on the back end that try to source the best investments that we can so that you know that your investments on rise are generating a long term return that the is going to get results for you. You can focus on your job. So um, that's that's something that we've built. Now, as far as the security aspects of it, how do we secure? First is one, we have certain licenses already, ones that we have in the bag in Nigeria. So we have our cooperative license. 
um, we, we are registered, uh, we are registered an investment advisor in the US. So we can hold certain assets, we can manage investments on the US side, and we can enter into certain relationships with uh, portfolio managers or, or brokers on the US side to build a portfolio for our users. And we also got invested in, so we, we, we have a partnership um, conversation pending with um, ARM in Nigeria, as well as uh, we actually got heard back from Nigerian SEC because we are also looking at, okay, what can we upgrade um, either by, by, by partnering with the existing asset managers or you know, getting some, some licenses of our own so that we can do more and also like increase um, our footprint in terms of the services we're offering. Um, and keep in mind that we've been, almost everyone involved in our team has either been, you know, so, so Dami, for instance, has done equity research for years. Um, so he's no longer as active, but he's still part of our investment um, team, like researching and, and agreeing on what investments to make for you. Um, but we have partners that are experts. We have institutions behind us. We're currently doing Techstars. So Techstars is a U.S. accelerator, um, U.S. startup accelerator, where they, you know, we're partnered with Western Union. Um, the accelerator is Techstars and Western Union. We're actually discussing with Western Union's um, higher-ups right now to essentially see, okay, what can we do to help provide more services? And, and so we're not resting on what we've done. We're always pushing. And there's a lot of effort that we've put into both the security of our investments, the partnerships that help us make those investments possible, the, the long-term pathway, because we want RISE to be here for the next 20, 50, 100 years, if possible. Uh, and we optimize for that, both in terms of the investments we select, the people we work with, the team members, the, 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 the processes, the product itself, right? And so we are not going to, again, because the subject of this today's meeting was more so about, you know, helping our users understand some of the possibilities that are out there. Um, so someone asks, what if I leave RISE today? So first thing is, that's a very good question. Um, I, I laugh because I remember tweeting um, yesterday that I know what my next venture is going to be, right? So, so because as a founder, I have a team, I have people, I have processes. Our investment selection process does not even sit. So for me, I, have, I, I contribute to it at the end of the process, but the, the, the beginning of the process starts with data, um, starts with an algorithm, starts with our research team, and then finally ends with like a handful of us who finally make a selection and we then go with the final part. So um, the management, there's a team. So we have a, we have, we have a COO, we have a, a CTO, um, we have engineers under him, we have financial analysts, um, we have marketing leads, we have uh, product managers that we know where the product is going. So even if I were to disappear off the face of the earth right now, trust me, the only thing you would do is you will probably introduce like a few days of friction where it's like, okay, uh, AK is not around. Um, and so we have to like change this or that. This person has to step into this role. This person has to hand over these um, responsibilities. We have to hire someone to do X, Y, Z. And then in less than a week, life continues. Because again, if I drop dead today, nothing changes. I'm aware of that. Um, almost everyone is aware of that. If you are working at your job, Trust me, if something happens to you, God forbid, nothing will happen to anybody here. But if something happens to you, everybody will be sad and they will mourn you privately while the work continues. So um, I think I just answered this question. Um, but I don't want us to, if you, if you have additional questions about Rice, first of all, download Rice Vest. It's always a good place to start from. Download Rice Vest. The minimums are $10. Um, and, and the reason we set those minimums low is one is $10 is not going to take you to retirement or your fire goal, but $10 is a good way for you to understand certain aspects of the product beyond just what we're explaining, right? Um, we're working on a version two of the product, which is going to come out. I think at least the last sprint that we had, we, we had like a three weeks to get in the product itself done. And then we're going to do a lot of polishing and all that. It's a lot of work to get, to get some of these things done. But we know that um, once you start, you understand it, you understand something by doing. Talking about things kind of like gives you an idea, um, gives you some clarity and comfort to get started. You're really gonna understand the product a lot better once you start using it. 
or talk to existing users or talk to us. So join our Telegram group. The Telegram group is designed for making it easy for you to understand um, what the goal is. You as a person, what your financial goal looks like, what's possible, how RISE helps you achieve that. Um, so you can get started. You can say, okay, I can start now putting X, Y, Z away every month. Um, also talk to other people in there. Second thing is use the product. It's, there's no point sharing a lot of information if you don't take action. Action drives a lot of the outcomes. The third thing is please, by all means possible, by all means possible, I want you to sit down. This is not about rice. It's not about our product. Those are the enablers. Our, our community is an enabler. We want you to join that. Our product is an enabler. We want you to get started. We want you to use it. It allows you to achieve this goal. But you as a person, the most important thing is look at where you sit. Look at where you're sitting. Look at the goal that, you, that, we, that we've talked about. And you can scale, scale that goal down as high or as low. But look at everyone that's been on here. They're no different from you. So you might be a student. Think about what can I do to get started with investing? Just to get started. The earlier you start, Jesse hinted at that, the earlier you start, the faster you will learn, and then the faster you achieve those goals. And it almost doesn't matter how much you start with, because once you start and you start seeking out information to learn, you quickly start realizing how you can ramp up and grow your income. The most important thing is to start, and that's what I want to emphasize on. As an individual, do whatever you can to start investing. Even if it's $10 you are putting away every month, just start. Um, so when you now start and you join the group and you download the product and you start investing, you realize that you ask more better questions, one. Two, you understand what to ask. You understand what's possible. Um, and then number three, you start getting those results much faster than others. But I want to summarize this call with this, which is, one, it's possible for anyone, and someone asks what's the middle class income in Nigeria, 200,000 every month. If you can do 200,000 every month, you can, you can put away $200. $200 is about 80,000, right? So let's even say 20% uh, uh, of your income is 40,000, so $100. That's even where you start. But really, what's, what's important is as you start, you're not going to earn 200K forever. You start realizing that, oh, I can do X, Y, Z to earn another 200K. Two, your job, you will grow in your job. You will probably make more. And you will know that, you will know it earlier that, you know what, as my income grows, my lifestyle doesn't have to grow with it. That's a lesson that most people learn later, but you would help yourself if you learn it sooner. But all of these lessons can be learned if you can start. So, um, and our app is Rise Vest. R-I-S-E space V-E-S-T is on the App Store, is on the Play Store. Our website is www.rise.capital. Um, so you can go there and read up about what we're doing, read up on some of our registrations. Some of the questions you're asking here is on our FAQs. Um, Rise.capital, there's no .com, R-I-S-E dot capital. That's, um, you can learn a lot more about us. Join our Telegram group, you hear from us, you hear from existing users, you hear from other experts, you hear from other successful people, some of them who you might even know um, that are also part of that group. Um, and hopefully by the time we come for the next month's meeting, so last month we had a guest, we had a semester and it was a very wonderful one where we really dove down into like wealth building and uh, democratizing access to wealth creation. And he made a lot of really important parts. I want to believe that this call also has been very helpful and very eye-opening. I want to thank all our panelists because they were wonderful. They shared perspectives that really hit home. So next month, we are probably going to bring in one or two, either someone that has gone the saver investor path, someone that has gone through the entrepreneur path. Even if we're lucky, we might get one of the, um, one of the virtuoso, you know, maybe a celebrity. But either way, we'll bring in someone that can then share their own journey and how they were able to achieve what they achieved. Um, so that, again, we're learning. We want to close out this year. If not for Corona, we probably would have had a physical event. But we've had um, so many insightful calls over the last few months. I want to keep it that way. So thank you all for always joining. Thank you all for always contributing. Thank you. So the spreadsheet, someone just asked about the spreadsheet. 
join the Telegram group. We're going to share our internal spreadsheet for you know where you tweak, how much you fund, what your returns look like, and what that adds up to in the long term. We're going to share that spreadsheet. We're also going to share links to some calculators that you could, that we like that you can use. Jesse, I'm saying this on his behalf, but I hope um, he's agreeing with it. But Jesse will share his spreadsheet, or maybe like a blank version of it. Um, Busola might share hers, but if not, we can whip up this spreadsheet. Maybe one of our calls will, will settle down and create it. It's not very very complicated. It just has to be something. The reason sharing someone else sharing their spreadsheet should always be so you see how it works because really the best value you get is when you based on your own real life circumstances and what you know you can use you create a system that you know you'll keep up with so if your own system is to write it down on pen and paper if your own system is to use a calculator and budget away and put it or do something that works for you but i'm sure that jesse busola and what we'll share will help you um also make some progress um so thank you everybody kane day what question did you ask that was not answered let me let me address that kane day uh let me address that before before we wrap this um and thank you guys we, we appreciate the feedback um this is probably the most attendees we've had so far um and kane i'm, I'm really waiting for your question and the, yes, deposit can be made in dollars, um, payouts can be made, in the, but not on the app. So there are minimums that are involved. If you have specific questions about RISE as a product, or you want to start using RISE and you have specific questions about, you know, how you want to use it, okay, I want to fund in dollars, I want to fund from, from Siberia and I need to get the money to you guys. Telegram channel one, second, hello at rise.capital. That's our email. Someone will always get uh, in touch with you. Just send a message to hello at rise.capital. Um, the exchange rate is on the app. If you want to fund on the app, you see the exchange rate right there. I think right now it's still 460 because we've been fighting tooth and nail to keep it at 460, even though the black market is at 480. But we've been finding, and, and, and the reason we found, um, we found rates uh, that basically kept at that 460 is because I, I have several other um, either products or communities that I have access to where you know, I can get rates. But again, the rates we use are whatever the rates we can get on the black market or third parties. Um, and if we can't find- Kennedy has asked this question again. Okay, can they just asked, right? Let me, let me. Oh yeah, yeah, Kennedy, yes. Um, you, you can automate your funding. Um, where if you just if you fund once you can set up an auto invest um so that every month it just makes the withdrawal from your from your account and that's something that we encourage everyone else to do as well which is just automate these things you set an amount you know okay i can put away x amount every month automate it and it will be automatically withdrawn and invested for you you don't have to do anything after that um so it's possible it's doable a lot of people are currently doing it i encourage more people to do it um, so there are specific, there's a lot of specific questions that people are asking. Hit us up at hello at rise.capital. Join our, um, join our Telegram group, ask some of those. But really the best place to ask those questions is our customer service channel. Even on our website, there's a, there's a, there's a chat, intercom chat, so you can chat with our team. But yeah, I think we definitely want to bring this to a close. Um, so does anybody have um, some one of our panelists? Do you guys have any final thoughts what, before we wrap this up? Uh, I want to get especially. Hello, good evening. I want to say something. Thank you very much. I didn't want to put anyone on the spot, but yes, please take it. Go ahead. Okay, I just want to talk to like young people. I don't. There was a time in the group chat that Telegram group. I was like, okay, we are rise last bonds. Those that are below, five <laughs> down. So I just want to say that they should. Like I just want to tell them that you should start. I use myself as an example. I've not started working. I'm currently serving in my mother's house because of the virus, but I'm originally posted to Oyo State. So when they call us back, yeah, when they don't call us back, fine. And my mother's house is in Nigeria, so I'm serving my country. 
But you know how to say that. With the little you have, you should start saving. When I, uh, you should start saving, I beg your pardon. When I talk to the people about um, investing, just the basic stuff, um, live less, spend less than you earn, save the difference, blah, blah, blah. They're like, okay, they want to get this amount of money. They're waiting for a windfall. And I tell them that if you can't manage the little one you have, you won't be able to manage... You can't manage 10,000 now, you can't manage 1 million. It's that simple. It's not like, I'm not a dooms prophet, but I'm just telling that what works. I even tell, there are some people I know, these are guys in, or guys and ladies in their 30s and 40s. Like when I talk, they're like, they're like, they're like mm, okay, what you're saying only works on paper, it's theory, it's not practical, blah, blah, blah. So I just said, well, okay, fine. Yes, I'm 22. <laughs> so I definitely don't know much about life. But this is what I've seen that, that has worked. And I'm very happy that I joined Rise. And I've seen people that are doing it and that have done it. So I know that I'm <laughs> that's just my contribution. Amazing. Wow. That's, that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a very good. And now, now I'm questioning my skills as a, as, a, as a moderator because you've sat on that insight and we're only hearing it at the end. But that was really amazing, um, which is that, for most young people, we feel like it's not, eh, it's not my thing. I'm not making any money. Eh, it's not true, right? Um, just that. You make a lot of mistakes, hopefully a lot less than, than we made. Um, I remember, I'm not going to call any companies' names here, but when the IPO craze happened in 2005, six, I was in high school, and you know, I, put, I put my money into different, and I lost almost everything. Well, it wasn't a lot. And I learned more from that loss than, than, than anything else I could have learned by just reading and talking about things. So start early. Um, thankfully, things have progressed a lot more. Um, there's a lot of, of opportunities now for you to learn. Yeah. So take full advantage of it. And okay, shout out to you Hello. for that. Yes, please go ahead. Theresa. Okay, my name is, my name is Teresa. Um, I'm, I'm a student. But what I want to advise students is that, aside getting side hustles, that they should apply for scholarships. And when they do apply for scholarships and they get the, and they get the money, like what I do, once, once I see my scholarship a lot, I'm like very excited. <laughs> but I try to invest it immediately because in school, there's already this temptation, there, there are Ponzi schemes flying around. And what I notice about this Ponzi scheme is, is that when you get there, because you are robbing, you are actually robbing um, Paul to pay Peter. And when they do get that money, they spend it extravagantly. Like they don't, they don't, um, they don't invest it. But if you actually take legit, if you actually do legit investment, you tend to be consistent with saving and investing it. So basically, my advice is that. Um, students should apply for scholarships and they should make sure that they invest the money and they should avoid Ponzi schemes and also they should try to get side hustles because being, um, being, they being on campus, they have like, they can get access to different people that want to buy their stuff, so whether it's clothes or maybe like me now, I'm a medical student, so I sell stethoscopes. So because stethoscopes, uh, we actually need stethoscopes like uh, my fellow colleagues actually buy from me. So that's what I have to say. Thank you for that. And um, I, I definitely like, I, I think we should probably do something. So we have a post on our medium for students. Um, I think we'll dive into scholarships and talking about those type of things, maybe either at an event or we'll do some work with someone that is uh, knowledgeable about that so that we can do something student focused. Um, but I also want to insert a note of caution, which is that um, don't, so with almost anything, so, uh, and this is for students, so if you're making extra income, um, feel free to invest as a way of learning. Um, don't, opti but I wouldn't optimize fully for necessarily like investments, right? Um, I, would, I would optimize for, yes, making side income, generating side income, boosting my earnings potential. And when I say boosting my earnings potential is, if you graduate with a first class or you graduate and you get a lot of internship experience, um, you get a lot of like networking and things that will help you land a strong job after school, they are almost more valuable than you can make. But I, again, because we are wrapping up this program, 
Um, I also don't want us to delve, delve into like a whole other topic. We have a few minutes left. But Theresa, what I want to commend you on is one, the, the insight or the, the presence of mind to one, know that, okay, if I'm making any unexpected income that I have, I can put them away, I can save them, I can invest them. Um, I can also make side jobs, side hustles. Um, one of the best things that you have when you're a student is that you have a lot of time, right? And so, so use that time effectively and use that time to learn. Even when we do post we wrote about how to save and how to invest as a student, we said one of the best things is treat your investment as another learning experience, as another way of boosting your earnings potential and start early, start early. If you have excess income, start early, start small, or start early so that you can then grow into that. By the time you hit the job market, you already have a lot of the habits in place that will take you to um, where you want to go. So thank you guys for this time. If, you, if we stay here longer, I'm, I promise you we'll even learn a lot of other things. Um, we'll keep talking about different things, but we do have to bring this to a close because already we've taken like uh, more time than we thought we were going to take, but this has been so fun. Um, this has also been very insightful. Um, we're going to share the recording um, for in the Telegram group and also on our YouTube channel so that anybody that wants to go back and like skip through or, read or listen and, and learn something or take notes um, will get the opportunity to do that. But I appreciate every single one of you for making this time. This has been helpful. This has been very, very great. Um, the Telegram channel, um, for those that are still asking, um, we're going to share that link, um, but it's been shared a couple times before. But if you if you can't find the link, just go to rise.capital. You'll see a link to join our Telegram group. Follow us on Twitter, risevest, R-I-S-E-V-E-S-T. That's our Twitter handle. Instagram is R-I-S-E dot V-E-S-T. Follow us on Instagram as well. Go to our website, rise.capital. You'll see all the information, how to join Telegram, how to do any other things, FAQs, how to the product works, what's available in the product. A lot of questions are answered on the website. And if you still don't have all the answers you need, send an email to hello at rise.capital and we'll try to get you straight. But I really look forward to us seeing in the next few years a whole lot of millionaires in dollars come out of the Rise ecosystem. I want to be, I want to be in a position where we can say, you know what, I saw how this journey started and we saw how it became successful. And so tell your friends about Rise. Um, that's always something that helps us. Tell your friends about Rise. Tweet about us, share the links, ask them to join, talk about them. There's a referral code that you have on your app where you can share the referral code to invite them. And if you're, you can apply, if you're a user and you actually have um, inve investment in Rise and we see that you can really understand the product, who we'll, we'll approve you as an affiliate um, so that you then earn a commission for people that you refer who invest. But that's not open, that's open only to people who are qualified users who then apply because we want to make sure that again, before you go out and tell someone um, to put their money, you also understand really what you're telling them and you're not just you know, doing it for the money's sake. But thank you very much. Um, and Chimobi, thank you so much um, as well. I appreciate you following us um, and I appreciate you being part of our journey. We really do appreciate every member of this, of this ecosystem. We think that is, we're doing something great and it's something we love. Um, and if there's any areas where we are not doing as well, believe me, we're working on it. And if you call our attention to it, we're going to keep improving. But yeah, thanks a lot. Have the enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. Thanks for all the support and bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>